Hey, this is Scooby Doo We Do. In this tutorial, you probably already know, we will learn how to slice an image. This will probably have multiple parts, I'm not for sure. And you'll just have to watch the scrubber bar on the YouTube site to know whenever each video is um, being switched because I, I don't have a time or anything to tell me, oh, it's been 10 minutes now, let's go ahead and tell them, look forward to the next tutorial or whatever. So, um, okay. I've opened up Finder and I have three fold or folder and two files and I have a file labeled index or named index.html and style.css and inside of index.html you'll notice I don't have I just have a basic HTML web page and in style.css I just have a resetter that resets the margin and padding to the page body that um, sets the margin of padding to zero and text align center te aligns the text to the center and a UL that just resets the um, list styles to none and inside. Okay, so I'm going to go back over to my folder and show you the images or the image I have. This is a basic template that I've designed for this tutorial and you'll notice it has a logo, three links or uh, tabs for the navigation and content area. So I'm just going to open it up in Photoshop and explain it to it, explain a little bit of it to you. So we have our background. Our background is just this textured background that I've added to it. A logo, this is the logo that I've designed. Um, tabs off, which is like their normal offset. When you hover over them, you'll notice that it adds more of a shadow to it and the text gets a little bit darker. And when they're active, meaning that that's the chosen one, they look kind of like that, okay? So, nothing fancy. Oh, and then the main content, this area, this big blue box -ish area. So, to slice an image, or, yeah, a Photoshop document like this, a template, I recommend having your rulers turned on. If you don't have that, click on View and scroll down to Rulers. So, I'm just going to drag right here, and I want to be careful not to cut off this shadow that we have here. I want to go around the shadow and also have a little bit of a glow right here on it so I also want to kind of go around that. So that's going to be our basic width of the entire document and I'm going to start off by getting the logo or the header area which is Scooby Doo Doo Tutorials and I'm just going to work my way down just get the navigation and then get this rounded corner and the content and then the bottom rounded corner. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this I'm going to get the logo or the header to the page. So just click and drag. And you'll notice that I'm kind of going above these tabs so we have that shadow there. And the reason I'm doing that is just to get the shadow. And don't worry about how I've just kind of cut off some of my logo -ish header right here. That's not a big deal. So now we can, because whenever we line these tech links up, they'll automatically connect and you want to be able to tell that they're separated. So I'm going to take my crop tool and just kind of crop out this header. And with these guides you notice that it automatically snaps. Okay? So you, it's not very hard to get those connected like that. Okay? So just double click on it and you cropped it. I'm going to choose File, Save for Web and Devices and save it. You'll notice this is a PNG file or a JPEG, I'm sorry and it's going to load about five seconds on dial-up. So we'll save this in the images area as header.jpg and save that. And I'm just going to undo what I just did so I have my document back. And re re I recommend saving because if you accidentally close that after doing that, you won't have your entire template and that's bad. Matter of fact, it might not be a bad idea if I save this template as the edit.pst, which so I'm editing this file and not my um, the one I really want, this one right here. Okay, so I don't have to worry about accidentally screwing this up. I'll have to worry about screwing that one up. So let's go ahead and get the width of our header.jpg. And you'll notice it's 635 pixels. That's pretty good. So, oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. We don't want to do that yet. Let's go, I'm going to go back into TextMate. And I'm going to add my div id equal to page wrap and the whole port, port, um, part of this page wrap is because it's going to wrap 
the, all the contents of my page. Inside this, I'm going to add an image, and the source is going to equal to images and header.jpg. And that's it. So we'll go back over to Safari, and I'm just going to open up that file in there. And you'll notice that now we have our header, and it's automatically centered. And if you're wondering how that happened, because it's because I have the text align center right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and get our three tabs set up with the rollover states. So I'm going to take another line, and I'm just going to drag it right just below where these tab kind of uh, rounds off or finishes its rounding off. So you can see this entire tab is going to include all of this. And if you're thinking, you're probably thinking, well, why not just go ahead and create a separate image for that? Well, you could do that and it would work, but it would require a lot more code and I don't think anybody really cares. Hey, you didn't just go ahead and crop that out and only get that tab. I don't I don't care really, but you might. So th that's the way I do it, and that's I'm proud of it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is take these guides and kind of just split up these links, and that's jumping. So I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit to get that one right. And I'm just trying to separate these shadows and these links. So now we have three links, and we could crop out each one of these individually, and that works, but it's not near as easy as what I'm about to show you. First, select your slice tool, and choose slices from guides, and choose file, save for web and devices. Hold down shift, and just select your three, seven, eight, and nine slices, like that, and click save. And I want to save these as nav.jpegs, and I only want to save the selected slices, so I'm not going to save all of these images and have to crop or delete them. So we can go ahead and save that document and go back over to our folder and into images. And you'll notice we have a new folder here. Just go into that one, and here are your four links. Actually, no, I accidentally selected that, so we can just delete that. All right, it won't matter. I'm going to delete the entire folder anyways. So I'm going to copy, or I'm going to look at home as the tab I want. I'm just going to rename it to home.jpg. Okay, and we're going to rename downloads.jpg and contact.jpg. I'm going to select these three links and copy them and paste them right here and delete this folder because that folder is no longer in use for us to me. So now we have our three links. Let's go ahead and create the code for those three links. So I'm going to add an unordered list with the ID of nav, and I'll style that in a minute. A list item, a link, and home. Like that. I'm going to go ahead and copy that, paste it two more times, and rename this to downloads. And this one to contact. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and finish off our ordered list and check it out and see what it looks like. So you'll notice that I have this centered, and that's only because of in my CSS in the body I have text line center. And I don't know if I told you this, but the reason I had the text line center is because Internet Explorer for Windows doesn't know understand the margin left and right. If you set those to audio, it does auto, it doesn't know to automatically center it. So you have to add that to your body tag to center a div. Okay, so I'm going to add a div or div for page wrap that we set up earlier. And I'm going to find the width of my image, my header image, because that, this image right here, if you remember, we set it up, or I can undo that, we set it